Welcome everybody to TechCraft, this is Rob, and in today's video I'm going to run you through the full workflow I use for editing raw images on the iPad. Let's go. So my workflow is pretty simple. I use only three applications. I start with the inbuilt iOS Photos app. I'm importing all my images from the SD card into Photos, and that's where I store all of my, my images. Then I do my first pass of edits in an app called Darkroom, and we'll see that in just a second. Then I do my final edits, retouching, special effects, adding text overlays, those kind of things, in an app called Affinity Photo, and we'll see that at the end of the video. But let's dive in right now with how to to import images from your SD card into Apple Photos. So here I am in the Photos app, and the first thing you'll notice is that down here in the right-hand corner, I have an import icon, and that is because I have my SD card plugged into the iPad. Now, I'm using the Hyperdrive 6-in-1 USB-C dock, but any USB-C SD card reader will do for the third-gen iPad Pro. I actually had a really small Anchor SD card reader that I've sadly lost, but I'll link to that below as well as to the Hyperdrive Dock. If you're using a lightning based iPad, then you'll need the uh, Lightning SD card adapter, and I recommend the Apple standard one, and I'll link that as well. But once you've got your SD card plugged in and it's connected to your iPad, and you bring up the, uh, the import icon here, you can tap on that, and you can see I actually already imported some photographs from this morning in my first take of this video, but let's show you how that works. I press select, that selects all of these photographs here with the blue little tick marks. I come up to import, and I press import selected. This will now import those images. There's only a few, so it doesn't take any time at all. But if you have a lot of images on your SD card, and if they're particularly high megapixel, this could take a little while. But eventually, you're prompted as to whether or not you want to keep or delete the images. I like to format my SD card in the camera, so I'm just going to hit keep here. And that's the basic workflow. I can now go back to the photos, and you can see that all the images are here. And actually, they've been imported twice, because I had to do this twice. Um, what I typically do now is kind of like a step 1A is I'll back up my photos to an external hard drive. And for that, I'm using the Western Digital My Passport Pro. I have a full video reviewing hard drives and talking about how to do that backup, and I'll link that up here. But just to say, you can basically put the SD card straight into the SD card slot on the drive, and I've got it configured to just automatically back up the card. So really, really powerful. So once I've got my photographs imported into the iOS Photos app, my next step is to run through them and do the edits on them that I want. And I do the edits in two phases. Phase one is using Darkroom, and phase two is using Affinity Photo. Now, let me just say at this point, I'm not sponsored by the developers of Darkroom or the developers of Affinity Photo. I've paid for both these apps with my own money. Darkroom, you can download for free, and you can edit raw images for free in Darkroom. If you want to use the advanced colors or curves tools, you will have to pay for that. You can buy just the Pro Tools package for £7.99 in the UK. Um, and you can then buy the filters pack, which has loads of interesting filters, also for £7.99. But what I did was I just paid for the full unlock of the app, which was basically £10. I think it's $10 in the US as well. I can highly recommend that. And if you're a serious editor, then the colors and the curves tools are absolute necessities. Affinity Photo, I paid £20 for at the time. It's currently on sale for only £10 in the UK and $10 in the US. So if you're going to get it, now is the time to get it before the price goes back up. Let's dive straight into Darkroom and see how to do the edits. Okay, so here I am in Darkroom, and you'll see that in this kind of initial grid view, which is showing all the photos that are on my iPad and imported into Darkroom, I can see every shot I have. The little R in the top corner signifies that these are raw files. The little pencil icon here in the top right corner shows that those have, uh, have been edited already, and I have some already marked as favorites. I can see those favorites here in the favorites tab. I can see all my edited photographs here, and then just categorizing things that you get from the camera, like live photos, portrait photos, and so on and so forth. And you can also bypass the Apple Photos app completely and just import photographs into Darkroom itself, which might be a workflow that you like to do. Currently, this doesn't work too well with an SD card import, so I still prefer to import into Apple Photos and then just edit from there. Going back to all photos though, these are the photographs that I took this morning and I'm gonna pick this last one, which I think I remember being the nicest one. And I'm gonna edit this into the thumbnail for this video using Darkroom and Affinity Photo. So let's see how that works. The first thing is, I know that when I took this, I laid it out so it would be roughly 16 by nine. So I'm gonna use the crop tool on the top left here 
scroll across and choose a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and you can see now that I'm sort of zoomed in on a 16 by 9 portion of this so it's click done and that's okay but I actually want to maybe get it a little bit tighter than that so I'm going to just change the uh, the bounding box there that's a bit too much so I'm going to full view here and I'm just gonna still too much I want there to be a reasonable bit on top of each that looks okay so let's click done so that's roughly right um, now what I want to do is correct this little bit of keystoning here you can see that it's not quite perfect in the perspective there so I'm going to hit that crop tool again I'm just going to change the horizontal perspective slightly let's zoom in and I can pinch to zoom um, let me zoom out a little bit you can see what I'm trying to correct here is the ratio on the side there that looks a bit better to me so I'm just going to leave that like that and the last thing I want to do in terms of orientation here is I want to rotate the actual iPad itself so that it's a little bit nicer angle. This is a bit boring as it's currently shot. So I'm going to take the crop tool again and I'm going to use the straighten thing here to just turn that a little bit. And I really like how this works because it's kind of keeping the overall canvas size and using the fact that there's a bigger image in the background here to rotate and fit this. And I'm just going to create a gentle angle like that. That's quite nice. Okay. This is the basic template I want now, and what I'm going to do is on this sort of right-hand side here where it's all blank, I'm going to put the uh, text. Let's just make this more vivid. This is all shot in RAW, so it's quite flat right now. Let's, let's fix that, and then we can go into Affinity. So I'm going to start in the middle here with these adjustment tools. This tool here is the filters tool. I'm not going to use that. Um, like I say, you can get some filters for free, which is these top set here, but everything past this X Pro section below you have to pay for. But I'm just gonna go in straight into adjustments. And the first thing I wanna do is just slightly lift the, lift the exposure. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I'm definitely gonna increase the contrast. That's nicer. I really want this to be whiter, so I'm gonna lift these whites um, without trying to wash out the iPad too much. That's quite nice. I'm just going to drop the black ever so slightly. And what I want to show you is if you pay attention to the histogram up here, if I push that down, it'll then show me when I start to clip. And it actually shows on a blue highlight on the image when I'm clipping the blacks. And I can double check that I'm not clipping the whites. Okay, so that is about right there. And then I'm just going to adjust the color temperature a little bit. I think part of why this isn't white is that the temperature is just slightly off. So I'm going to shift that towards the blue. There we go. Let's make that a lot whiter. And the iPad still looks right to me. Uh, final thing is maybe just lift these highlights a little bit and then lift the shadows to get some detail. That looks really nice. Okay. And the other thing I want to do here is I know that when I take RAW on the Canon EOS R, it's not quite as sharp out of the camera. So I'm just going to sharpen that up so that this text comes into focus here. Now, often what you want to do here is kind of compare and contrast the images as you started with the images you have it. So if I just press and hold on the image, it goes back to the original as it was shot, and then I can bring up what I have. This is looking much more like what I would expect the basis of a YouTube thumbnail to look like. Now, one thing I can do here is maybe add a vignette if I want to, to just sort of pull the focus in. Um, and that's often something I'll do. And you know what, I'm gonna leave that as it is because I quite like that vignette, just to focus you on this white area here. Uh, and I think also because the toolbar is here, and this is the thing I wanna highlight on the photograph, the vignette is drawing attention to that as well. This is quite nice. What I wanna do now is bring this over to Affinity Photo and finish it off. So to get this into Affinity, what I'm gonna do is hit the export icon up here and I've got a whole bunch of options here. I can store a copy of this or I can, uh, uh, open this up in another app and I'm going to hit export to other apps. This will bring up the default sharing sheet in iOS. Once you have opened the share sheet, you'll have the set of apps up here. I have open in photo as a favorite. Let me show you how to just to configure that. If you scroll over here and hit more, you can hit edit at the top here and you can choose which of your apps you want to be in the favorites. This is something I do a lot. So I have open in photo set as a default. To choose that now opening photo and then this will now open up affinity photo and open up the raw image but with the camera edits that we've made and then we're then free to use affinity to do the final touches that we want for our image so the first thing i'm going to do is search for any blemishes in the image and i'm going to remove them using the blemish removal tools so i'm just going to pinch and zoom here and move the image around and uh, have a see i can see a blemish here on the canvas there so i'm going to get rid of that 
So I found this blemish and what I want to do is remove it and I'm going to use the blemish removal tool and all the tools are on the left hand bar here and you can tap on them uh, to select them and if uh, if it has this little triangle icon here if you tap on it again it will bring up the sub menu of tools so you can see here there's a grouping of clone brush healing brush and so on and so forth but i'm going to use blemish removal which is a kind of smart blemish tool and i'm just going to tap that and you can see the blemish disappeared and i can keep looking around for these but i actually think this is pretty pretty nice so i don't have to worry about that too much okay so that's the blemishes removed. Now what I want to do is add the text overlay and I'm going to put the text inside some colored rectangular boxes. Then I'm probably going to rotate the text a little bit. So let's see how that works. So the first thing is I'm going to start with the text. So I'm going to choose the artistic text tool, which is the bottom here on the toolbar art text. And I'm just going to tap in the middle there. And by default, the text is set to 12 points Arial, which is quite small. I'm going to choose a different font so i'm probably going to choose uh let's have a see helvetica and i'm definitely going to set that to something larger for now so i'm going to choose 288 just simply so i can see what it is that i'm typing and i want this to say something like editing raw on the ipad or editing raw on your ipad pro so let's see how that looks uh, i'm going to put shift on editing raw i'm going to do one line like that and i'm going to make that all caps so we're going to leave one line like that and then I'm going to do another line in a second as a separate text box. So now we have that and I want to show you quickly is if you go into the layers panel you can see that the text layer, uh, the text box is its own layer. I can select the move tool and I can move this around so roughly position it there and I can also grab this lower corner here and resize it and it stays in the right uh, aspect ratio which is quite nice. So I've resized that now and you'll see that if I uh, double tap and bring back to this that actually it's changed the font size so it's not just scaled up and we're not losing any font information it's actually changing the size of the font when we do the scale something that i really like and i find that very very handy i'm also going to make this bold while i'm in here so that looks very nice whoops so i've moved the background and what i want to do is just go back on that and i find it quite handy if you're doing this to actually lock the background so i can come into here the layers press the three dots and lock that so now i can't drag that around by accident which is quite nice what I want to do now is draw the rectangle behind this text. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool down here and I'm just going to drag a rectangle around the text like that. And the fill is white by default, but I want this to be the red color that I use for my images. And I have that saved as a swatch here. And I've just chosen the color tool on the right hand bar here, which is directly under the layers tool. And you'll see that you can choose different sliders to choose the color, but also there's a swatches section down here. And I have a swatch panel saved myself. I'm just gonna choose my red. Okay, cool, get rid of that. Now, I want to make sure that the text is aligned inside there. So I'm just gonna dra drag that around with the move tool, make sure I've got that selected. And then you can see I've got snapping bars there to make that more to center that. So let me just show you that again. You can see those bars are snapping as I move around. This is looking okay. I actually want the, like the text to be white. So I'm just gonna hit the color up here and choose quick colors white. Okay, so that looks okay. Zoom back out. Now what I want to do is make these two into a group because I'm not gonna change them now. So two ways to do this. One is if you have a keyboard, you can shift click the two things and then press command and G like you would in Photoshop to turn this into a group. If you don't have a keyboard, that's obviously not possible. So you can use the layers panel to create a group. So with the text layer selected, I'm gonna press this grouping icon here and then I'm just gonna expand that and drag the rectangle group, the rectangle layer into that group. And then I can select the group here in the uh, layers panel, use the move tool, and I'm moving the thing as a whole. And I can even resize that as a whole if I want to. Okay, so I'm happy with that first line of text. What I want to do now is clone that and create a, another text banner with the rest of the text inside it. So to do this, with this selected, I'm gonna hit the three dots up here on the top and choose duplicate selection, and then use the move tool to move that down. So now I've got two of these. What I want to do is expand the layers group here, that text selected, and then with the text tool, just go in there and uh, edit this. I'm just gonna say uh, on iPad Pro. Oops, how do I get the right? Okay. 
So I'm happy with that. Obviously this text is no longer centered, so I'm going to click the move tool, hit the text. If you can't select it properly, you can obviously use the layers panel to do so. And then I'm just going to move that around until it snaps in place like that. Brilliant. So now what I want to do is align these two groups properly. So I'm just going to move this one and then maybe just offset it a little bit like that. That looks quite nice. Now what I want to do is ro rotate these two groups together and I can do that reasonably easily. So to make a multiple selection, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down on the screen over here with my uh, left hand and then tap the two things that I want. And now I can move these as a, as a whole. And this little anchor here, this little handle here is the rotation handle. So I can just drag that over and rotate it. Alternatively, what I can do is on the right hand bar here, there's a transform tools section and I can play with it in here if I want to, the rotation and so forth. But I just quite like to use this handle like that. Uh, and then move it, that looks okay. Okay, this is nearly done. The last thing I want to do is I want to put the icons of Darkroom and Affinity Photo on the image so that it, it stands out on, on YouTube as a, a video about those two pieces of software. This is really easy to do. I've already downloaded those logos. All we need to do is place them as layers inside Affinity Photo. So to place a new image in here, I'm gonna hit the three dots up here and choose place and then place from photos. And I've got this iOS logos uh, album down here and I'm just gonna choose the, the Affinity Photo logo. And then you just drag to the size you want. Okay, that looks okay. And maybe I'll make that smaller later, but that looks okay for now. I'm gonna do the same thing again, this time for the Darkroom logo. And if I drag next to this, it will actually snap to be the same size, which is really nice. If you're not certain you've got the size right, don't worry about it. You can bring up the transform tab here and this tells you that that is 653 pixels and that that is also 653.2 pixels. So those two things are the same size, which is great. Now I'm just gonna select both of these and put them where I want them, which is sort of down here. Have to be wary because there's a, on YouTube down here, the time, uh, the, the length of the video shows up. So I don't want this too far down. That looks okay. I just want to make these two things stand out a bit more now. So what I want to do is put some sort of like drop shadow or glow on them. Really easy to do that. I'm going to close the transform tab. I'm going to come into the layer effects tab here and I'm going to hit uh, outer shadow, turn that on. Now, slightly confusing UI here. You have to both turn it on and select it to make this little control set pop up down here. And it's here now that we can control the offset and so forth. So I'm just going to do that. You can see like now, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see that more. As I now increase the offset, the shadow increases. If I increase the radius, it sort of softens out a little bit. And what I want it to do is roughly reproduce the shadow of the image here. So it's quite intense. Um, I'm gonna make it like that. And maybe increase the radius a little bit. Obviously I'm not gonna get this perfect, but it's looking closer. And if I zoom out, can you still see it? So this is about done. This is roughly what I'd like my thumbnail to look like. I might make some final changes before I actually publish this, but that shows you roughly what the workflow is to go from an image on your SD card into Apple Photos, from Photos into Darkroom to make the basic kind of light and exposure edits, and then finally into a finished piece inside Affinity Photo. All that remains is to actually export this now to a JPEG that we can upload to YouTube. Let's see how. So back in Affinity Photo, hit the three dots on the document icon this time and choose export. And you've got a whole bunch of options in here. I'm gonna choose JPEG. Uh, this is a YouTube video, so the key thing here is to make sure it goes out in sRGB. And currently it's 9.18 megs, which is huge. So I'm gonna change the width of this to 1920. It automatically scales the height to 1080, which is nice. And it's 1.67 meg, which is definitely within the realms for YouTube, but I'm just gonna slightly adjust the quality slider down. It makes it quite a bit smaller. Now you can hit okay and you get options to like where you wanna store it and whatever, but I actually just prefer to use share and then bring up, and then bring up the share sheet and then scroll down and just choose save image. Once you hit save image, it actually saves the finished result into Apple Photos. And if we switch back in here, you can see that I have the finished item in the Photos app. So this is my full raw image editing workflow for the iPad. Really simple, three apps, Photos, Darkroom, and Affinity Photo. I invested, what, 30 pounds to buy those apps, but you can get them right now for 20 pounds if you get the Pro Unlock for Darkroom. If you don't care about those extra tools, then you can just download Darkroom for free. 
You can obviously invest in the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. You can use Lightroom for free on your iPad, but you can't edit raw images in the free version. You have to have a Creative Cloud subscription. Currently, the cheapest way to get that is £10 per month or $10 per month, which gets you Lightroom and Photoshop and 20 gigabytes of cloud storage. Now, Photoshop for the iPad has just been released and I have been playing with it, but let me tell you, at least right now, it is no match for Affinity Photo. I am gonna keep persevering with it and see how, you know, how much it improves over the next few months, but you really can't go wrong investing in Affinity right now. I hope that you found this video useful and I hope you found it entertaining. Please do hit like, do hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit that bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.